I wanted to touch briefly on the general mechanism by which steroid hormones act. This is a separate section in endocrine physiology about the other types of signaling pathways, but this section gets a little bit more into the mechanism of the steroid pathway. So, these guys are lipophilic, which is cool because they diffuse straight through the lipid bilayer into the cell, but not cool because being lipid soluble means that they're not really soluble in the aqueous medium of the blood. And being transportable in the blood is kind of a prerequisite to being a hormone. Thankfully, a group of blood proteins called binding globulins are here to pick up the slack. They're kind of neat in that they've got enough external polar residues to be water soluble, but enough nonpolar pockets to serve as a nice safe haven for steroid hormones. For most of these lipophilic hormones, the steroid reaches the cell, tells the binding globulin thanks for the ride, and hops off the protein to passively diffuse into the cell. Unless, of course, you're a thyroid binding globulin, in which case you have to be actively transported in. Once in the nucleus, these hormones either directly or indirectly bind to transcription factors, causing a conformation change that, oh hey, just so happens to change the shape of the active site to just the right shape for binding a certain gene sequence. Isn't it crazy how that works? Once that transcription factor binds to a corresponding gene sequence, a whole set of proteins take the cue to initiate transcription, leading to translation, protein synthesis, and a set of long-lasting cellular changes. Now, these changes lack the immediate nature of the G-protein cascades, which require significant signal amplification, but the steroid hormones usually create much more permanent, long-lasting effects.